Section 4 of Institutes of the Christian Religion, Book 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Institutes of the Christian Religion, Book 1. By John Calvin, translated by Henry Beveridge. The Epistle to the Reader and Subject of the Present Work. The Epistle to the Reader, prefixed to the second edition, published at Strasbourg in 1539. In the first edition of this work, having no expectation of the success which God has in his goodness been pleased to give it, I had for the greater part performed my office perfunctually, as is usual in trivial undertakings. But when I perceived that almost all the godly had received it with a favor which I had never dared to wish, far less hope for, being sincerely conscious that I had received much more than I deserved, I thought I should be very ungrateful if I did not endeavor, at least according to my humble ability, to respond to the great kindness which had been expressed towards me, and which spontaneously urged me to diligence. I therefore ask no other favor from the studious for my new work than that which they have already bestowed upon me beyond my merits. I feel so much obliged that I shall be satisfied if I am thought not to have made a bad return for the gratitude I owe. This return I would have made much earlier had not the Lord for almost two whole years exercised me in an extraordinary manner. But it is soon enough, if well enough, I shall think it has appeared in good season, when I perceive that it produces some fruit to the Church of God. I may add that my object in this work was to prepare and train students of theology for the study of the sacred volume, so that they might both have an easy introduction to it and be able to proceed in it with unfaltering step, seeing I have endeavored to give such a summary of religion in all its parts, and have digested it into such an order as may make it not difficult for anyone who is rightly acquainted with it to ascertain both what he ought to principally to look for in Scripture and also to what head he ought to refer whatever is contained in it. Having thus, as it were, paved the way, I shall not feel it necessary, in any commentaries on Scripture which I may afterwards publish, to enter into long discussions of doctrine or dilate on commonplaces, and will therefore always compress them. In this way the pious reader will be saved much trouble and weariness, provided he comes furnished with a knowledge of the present work as an essential prerequisite. As my commentary on the epistle to the Romans will give a specimen of this plan, I would much rather let it speak for itself than declare it in words. Farewell, dear reader, and if you derive any fruit from my labor, give me the benefit of your prayers to the Lord. Strasbourg, 1st of August, 1539. Subject of the Present Work Prefix to the French edition, published at Geneva in 1545. In order that my readers may be better able to profit by my present work, I am desirous briefly to point out the advantage which they may derive from it. For by so doing I will show them the end at which they ought to aim, and to which they ought to give their attention in reading it. Although the Holy Scriptures contain a perfect doctrine to which nothing can be added, our Lord having been pleased therein to unfold the infinite treasures of his wisdom, still every person not intimately acquainted with them stands in need of some guidance and direction as to what he ought to look for in them, that he may not wander up and down, but pursue a certain path, and so attain the end to which the Holy Spirit invites him. Hence it is the duty of those who have received from God more light than others to assist the simple in this matter, and as it were, lend them their hand to guide and assist them in finding the sum of what God has been pleased to teach us in his word. Now this cannot be better done in writing than by treating in succession of the principal matters which are comprised in Christian philosophy. For he who understands these will be prepared to make more progress in the school of God in one day than any other person in three months, insomuch as he in a great measure knows to what he should refer each sentence, and has a rule by which to test whatever is presented to him. 
seeing then how necessary it was in this manner to aid those who desire to be instructed in the doctrine of salvation i have endeavored accordingly to the ability which god has given me to employ myself in so doing and with this view have composed the present book and first i wrote it in latin that it might be serviceable to all studious persons of what nation soever they might be afterwards desiring to communicate any fruit which might be in it to my french countrymen i translated it into our own tongue i dare not bear too strong a testimony in its favor and declare how profitable the reading of it will be lest i should seem to prize my own work too highly however i may promise this much that it will be a kind of key opening to all the children of god a right and ready access to the understanding of the sacred volume wherefore should our lord give me henceforth means and opportunity of composing some commentaries i will use the greatest possible brevity as there will be no occasion to make long digressions seeing that i have in a manner deduced at length all the articles which pertain to christianity and since we are bound to acknowledge that all truth and sound doctrine proceed from god i will venture boldly to declare what i think of this work acknowledging it to be god's work rather than mine to him indeed the praise due it must be ascribed my opinion of the work then is this i exhort all who reverence the word of the Lord, to read it and diligently imprint it on their memory, if they would. In the first place, have a summary of Christian doctrine, and, in the second place, an introduction to the profitable reading both of the Old and New Testament. When they have done so, they will know by experience that I have not wished to impose upon them with words should any one be unable to comprehend all that is contained in it he must not however give it up in despair but continue always to read on hoping that one passage will give him a more familiar exposition of another above all things i would recommend that recourse be had to scripture in considering the proofs which i adduce from it end of section four Recorded by Lyle Wilson, Haymarket, Virginia, May 2009.